Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, Joe McGovern with JMCAD Design. Listen, I'm bringing to you the absolute basics of AutoCAD 2021 in a brand new playlist. All of these videos will be between 5 and 10 minutes long, and you'll be able to follow along and be a seasoned vet in no time. This is exactly what my students go through in the beginning of the year in room E03 in Toms River, New Jersey. So thanks for showing up, and I'll see you guys out there. Later. Ladies and gents, welcome to the absolute basics of AutoCAD 2021. I will take you through in the next couple videos everything you need to know about 2D AutoCAD. This playlist is going to be full of videos that are between 5 and 10 minutes long to make it easier to understand everything that I'm saying and to let that information sink in before you move on to the next video. So the first thing you're going to need to do is obviously to download the software. You can purchase the software on autodesk.com, you can get a 7 day trial on there, or I'll put a link in my description of how you could get the software for free if you're a student or a teacher, or if you know a student or teacher that's willing to lend you that license. So once you get that software downloaded, you're going to want to open up AutoCAD 2021. It's important to note that the A up here is your file menu. And that's going to show you some of your recent work. It's going to give you a new tab and an open tab. And you'll also, once you have some of your work open, like if I went to new here, you'll see that there are different templates that I can open. The ACAD.DWT template is the one that we're going to want to use going forward because it's just a blank 2D template that you open up and everything starts from in there. So if I click on that and I hit open, you'll see now that my file menu has changed to be save, save as, import, export, if you wanted to bring things in from other software or export them as PDFs. Really anything that you're looking to do that's a main function like that is going to be in the A file system. There are also options in here that you can change about the software, which I will get into in a later on video. In this video, I want to talk about the user interface of AutoCAD 2021. You have up here your basic 2D tools. This is called ribbons up here. You can change the ribbons by going across the tabs. The important menu to note as I'm going through these videos is just going to be the home tab. In this first area of the home tab, you're going to see all of your draw tools. So you'll have your lines and your polylines and circles and rectangles. Behind there, you'll see a polygon tool. Anytime you see an arrow, that'll drop down to a different menu. You have an ellipse tool, uh, other ellipse options. You have a hatch pattern tool, gradients and boundaries. Different things that you can create and you also have a menu down here that you can drop down for even more 2D tools. The second area of this ribbon is your modify tools. It's everything that you can modify about the things that you've already created. So let's say that I took a line and I drew a line from one point to another by clicking my mouse. I can then move that line. I can rotate that line. I can trim the line if I have another line to trim it to. I can copy it, mirror it, I can do a filleted corner on a box. Uh, I can array it. You know, there are a lot of different things that you can do in the modify tools. And we'll get into that a little bit deeper in my next video. You also have a dimensioning tool. So let's say I was to take this line here and I was to click from one point to another on the screen. I can use this dimensioning tool to click from one end to the other to see exactly how long that line is. I can also take the line tool and specifically make a line that is length however long I want. So as I'm drawing to the right, you'll see there is a green line. This is called the polar line. Polar is F10 on your keyboard. So if you're not seeing that, you can hit F10 and it will say polar off or polar on. You want polar to be on anytime you're doing these drawings. As a default, the polar line gives you zero degrees, which goes to the right, 90 degrees, which goes up, 180, which goes left, 270 which goes down and back to 360 or also known as zero degrees. So I can go in this direction and type a distance like five and then hit enter. Everything that you're doing is in this bottom command line down here. So you can see these little dots on the left side. I like to click on that and pull that down and that'll give me a larger command line to see everything that I'm typing and everything that the system is asking for. I can also bring this up a little bit to see a couple more lines. Any command that you can possibly do in the software is something that you can also type in the command line. So if you'd rather type your commands, you can type line enter, or you can type the shortcuts of each thing like L enter would also be line. I'll get into these in a later video as well. 
to erase something that you've created, you have a couple different options. You can just click on that line and hit delete on your keyboard, or you can go to the erase tool up here and click on whatever it is and hit enter. And as you're doing that, you'll see it says down here, select objects that you want to erase. I want to erase this line, so I click on it. If I'm done selecting my objects, that's when I hit enter and it will erase that line. So that is another form of modifying what you've already done by deleting it. In order to see the functions of what each tool does, one of the things you can do is just highlight over the tool without clicking and it will give you a little drop down menu with a description and a picture of what it does and also a little shortcut that you can type in. If I go to the polyline, you'll see that it says creates a 2D polyline. It'll show you a little description of what it does, how to use it with a little icon, and it'll tell you that you can type P line in order to go to polyline in the command line. Circle. Behind the circle tool, there is an arrow that you can click down to give you other circle options. If you want to start with the center of the circle and then type in the radius, you would use the center radius tool. Likewise, center diameter. You can do a two point circle by clicking from one point to another. You can do a three point circle and you can do tan tan radius and tan tan tan, which is just tangent to certain points, lines and other curves. If I were to select the center radius tool, it's going to say specify the center point for the circle. The center point can be anywhere I want or I can type in a coordinate. Let's say I want it to start at 0 comma 0 on the drawing space. You'll see that 0 0 is right where this green line meets this red line in the bottom left corner where the X and Y meet. It'll then say specify the radius of the circle. So I can type in 10 for a radius 10 circle, which would be the same thing as a 10 diameter circle. If I wanted to move this circle, I would go to the move tool. I'd click on whatever I want to move. And it's also important to note that you can click multiple things within these selections. Just like when you were erasing, you can click multiple objects and then hit the delete on the keyboard or use the erase tool, select multiple and hit enter. In order to use the move tool, I would click move and I would select the things that I want to move. When it says select objects, but you're done selecting objects, you would hit enter. And it'll say specify the base point. Where do I want to grab this circle from? If I hover over the outside of the circle, you'll see this little green mark here. That's called an object snap. It'll snap to the center of that object if I click out here. And at that point, I can now type a new coordinate like 10 comma 10, and it will put the center of that circle there. You'll notice that as I'm drawing, I'm panning around. This is the pan tool. You can go to the pan tool by using the little hand over here and then clicking on your work and holding down and moving the screen. You can also use the scroller on your mouse. If you click and hold that down, that's also a pan. And as you move your mouse, it will move on the screen. That's useful because when you're in a tool, and I'm drawing something, instead of going into a whole new tool called pan, I can do a quick pan just by clicking down on the scroller and moving around the screen, but it doesn't kick me out of that tool. There are other object snaps that are important to talk about. Let's say I had a line on my screen and I wanted to connect to the end of it. I could go to the line tool and I can hover over the end and you'll see an object snap. That is an endpoint object snap which will snap right to the end of that line. To toggle these different object snaps on and off, you can type O snap or OS enter on the keyboard in order to get into the different object snaps. You'll see I always have endpoint, midpoint, and center turned on. I like to have intersection turned on, and these other ones I can use at different times so you can turn them on and off on the fly. You can also snap from one object to another. So if I wanted to snap from the midpoint of this line to the center of the circle, you'll see that I can snap to those different points. The last thing worth mentioning in this first video is that you can go up to the A, you can hit save as and save your work anywhere on your computer. So if you go to the desktop or if you go to your documents, just type in a file name here and hit save and it will save your work in that location. Thank you guys for watching. This was part one of the absolute basics of AutoCAD 2021 and I will definitely see you in the next one. If you like this video and you want to help the channel out, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and maybe even turn on the bell so you can see my future videos. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in part two. Later.